Hey, good day to you. This is Todd, and I'm just a regular dude walking in the Word. Today we're continuing our journey through the book of Mark, and we're looking at Mark 6, and I'm going to be reading from verses 14 through 29. It says this, have your Bibles and have them open. Verses 14 says, King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah, and still others claimed he is a prophet like the one of the prophets from long ago. So Herod is hearing all this stuff. And you remember in the last episode, Jesus had gone out, uh, had sent his disciples out um, to teach. And Jesus had been teaching long before that. Um, and so his reputation had come to Herod, and Herod's like, oh no, I think this might be John the Baptist, which I killed. Okay, But Herod, when he heard this, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. So now we're going to, this is the, the story is happening here. But now Herod is going to flash back um, to, to what he did to John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist is dead. All right. Verse 17. When Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, It is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be righteous and a holy man. When Herod heard John, he was greatly puzzled yet liked to listen to him. So, to give you kind of the backstory of what's happening here is Herod had been married, okay? And he had been married to a princess um, and the ruler was naturally from another uh, land. He falls in love with Herodias, um, which is Philip's, Philip was Herod's brother. It was his wife, okay? Well, to make all this work out, um, he divorces his um, wife, and then he marries uh, Herodias, uh, Philip's wife here, okay? John the Baptist um, is very uh, blunt about it and says, you're living in sin by marrying your brother's wife, which was unlawful to do, okay? So hey, <clears throat> John the Baptist uh, says that to him. When you're confronted about sin in your life, you can respond one of two ways. You can repent and say, yeah, you know, you're right. Um, or you can um, say, mm, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And in, in this case, um, Herodias held a, nursed a grudge against uh, John the Baptist. And she didn't like what he was saying, okay? So, so that's what's, what's happening here. But the story is going to get uh, even more icky. And then, um, so you'll see what happens. Verse 21 Finally, the opportune time came. On his birthday, Herod gave a great banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his dinner guests. Okay, And this, um, this daughter would have been his stepdaughter. It wouldn't have been his daughter. It would have been the daughter of Herodias and Philip. Okay, So she came in and danced. And I'm sure it wasn't like doing a square dance and swing your partner round and round you know that type of thing it was a seductive dance okay and Herod and all his officials were like oh yeah this is great ah oh, yeah keep on and um, you know doing all that stuff and he was so taken aback with it that he uh, and this is his stepdaughter okay we're getting into icky here he's um, he is willing to say I'll give you half, uh, half the kingdom you know uh, because of this. All right. So the king said to the girl, girl, remember girl, it's not a, a woman. It's a girl here. Ask me for anything you want and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. Okay. So he was really taken aback by this. So she went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? She probably had everything she needed and wanted. And she was like, oh, what, what do I ask for? So this is where Herodias comes in. 
And the, the, her mother said, the head of John the Baptist. This is what she wanted. At once the girl hurried into the king with a request. I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed, but because of his oaths and his dinner guests, he did not want to refuse her. Okay, he didn't want to look bad. He just, she just did the seductive dance, and then um, he says, Oh, yeah, I'll give you anything you want, you know, you chariot, whatever. And um, she goes, Well, I just want the head of John the Baptist. Okay, yeah, he liked to listen to John the Baptist and respected him. However, when she said this, he's like, oh, great, now i got to do this, okay? It's verse 27, so he immediately sent an executioner with orders to bring John, John's head. The man went and beheaded John in prison and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb, okay? So that's how... John the Baptist died. Um, one thing, uh, several things here, as I was reading uh, a commentary from David Guzik, um, it says the, the depth of, of what he was, um, the grief that Herod had, it's the same word that um, describes Jesus when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, okay? He has that same type of grief. He, he's like distraught, like, oh, I got to kill John the Baptist, who I really respected and stuff. However, his wife did not respect it and wanted him dead. Okay. And then the other thing, the end of the story, um, it, it ends uh, not here in the Bible, but it ends in history that you remember when Herod um, had his first wife and um, he divorced her. Okay. Well, do you think the woman, the woman, her uh, father, who's the ruler of another country, is going to be happy about that? Mm, not at all. Okay. So what happens in the end is that guy comes and uh, attacks Herod. Okay. And, and destroys that. And Herod and Herodias end up dying. Okay. Um, as a result of this. Uh, and, and, you know, it's a, all, all a twisted thing. And sin is like that. It's a big, you can get in a big twisted mess. All right. The thing I want you to remember from this today is this. Um, you can, when you're confronted with sin, you can respond in one of two ways. You can repent and say, yeah, you know, you're right. Um, or you could do like Herodias and, and nurse a grudge against whoever brings that repentance. Okay. So if someone says, uh, Todd, I, I think you're, you're doing this in sin. Um, if I can repent or I could go, mm, no, I, I don't like what you're saying and then hold a grudge against that person. Okay. Um, so be, be a person that repents. All right. So that's my word for today. Um, taken right from the Bible here and continue. We'll continue our journey through the book of Mark tomorrow. And thanks for watching. Blessings to you. Hey, this is Todd again here. Um, I just uh, wanted to share some more with you. When I was, I'm using my iPad uh, some here, and when I was using it the last time, it was so hot out here that um, it got too hot, and I could I right when I was going to start using it, it it stopped. It got too hot. So anyway, but there's two things I wanted to bring out that I have on my iPad here. When John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod. Um, it was requested by his, Herod's uh, stepdaughter that uh, that John the Baptist be beheaded. This um, brought great grief to Herod, and so much so that the word is used that the word is it's the Greek word is paralopos, which is greatly distressed, and that is the same word that um, Jesus. Um, that was used as for Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were both, in each situation, they were both greatly distraught about what was happening. Jesus, uh, rightfully so, about um, the coming execution. And then Herod, um, who he was, a, he respected John the Baptist, but um, his stepdaughter had said uh, she wanted the head of John the Baptist, and he was, he felt obligated he had to do that. Um, so that he was uh, greatly distressed by that. 
the other thing I wanted to bring out was this. I think I had misquoted um, some things uh, in the last segment there. But um, Herod and Herodias, uh, ultimately, uh, their payback is uh, terrible. So let me read this. This is from David Guzik's commentary here. It said, Neither was it long that this tyrant Herod had his payment from heaven. In order to take his brother's wife, wife, in order to take his brother's wife, Herodias, Herod put away his first wife, a princess from the neighboring kingdom to the east. Her father was offended, rightfully so, I would be offended too, and came against Herod with an army, defeating him in battle. Then his brother Agrippa accused him of treason against Rome, and he was banished into the distant Roman province of Gaul, where Herod and Herodias committed suicide. Wow, they thought they had like the happy life <laughs> their ruling and um, and Herodias, um, you know, had the head of John the Baptist and everything. And in the end, they're banished to a, a distant Roman province of Gaul, and they both end up committing suicide. So a uh, terrible ending uh, for both of those, it's kind of an ultimate payback. So anyway, I just wanted to, to share that with you um, it, it, from this segment here. All right. Thanks. <laughs>